Today's Wednesday, May 9, 2018. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to show number 504. It is good to be here. Thank you for listening to the show. It is my pleasure to bring this to you, even though it is uh, probably around 430 right now. Yes, I've been up since 2 a.m. in the morning. If you're joining me for the very first time, this is the Elevator Radio Show podcast, which can be downloaded over on the Blueberry BL, BL. U R R Y. It's at the bottom of the website link, elevatorradioshow.com. Check it out. That's where our hosting is at, and they also have some great other podcasts. The reason why we picked Blueberry was that they've got a Roku interface, so we are also part of the Roku network in terms of how the show is listened to and whatnot. It's always a part of iTunes. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere pretty much that you can download some type of content along with Facebook, uh, elevatorradioshow.com. It's everywhere you could possibly want it to be, right? Right. Anyway, it's good to be here. Oh, I almost didn't want to go to sleep last night. I was just, my mind was turning and turning and turning. And uh, so I'm going to start the show out with just some general uh, feedback. And I'm not sure if I'm going to explain this as much or as well as I as I hope that it gets across. Because A, it's early in the morning. And B, I haven't had that much coffee. And C, I'm tired. And uh, D, <laughs> or 4. <laughs> I'm I'm just aggravated, just aggravated, bottom line. So my first topic I want to talk about before I get into news content of the show is something that came to light in the last two days. And for some reason, Tuesdays, I don't know if you found this or not, but more often than not, Tuesdays are tough, and I don't know why. Tuesdays are sometimes days that I literally go home, just pull my hair out going, what in the world is going on? And you need those kind of days to make you appreciate the good days. I've come to that realization. But nine times out of ten, they are just tough. So the last two days, I've been involved with a project that involved an elevator from 1934. Old, right? Pretty darn old. Hold down push button. Has single. They were openable in the from the inside or what the deal was. Don't have enough information. So, in fact, I want to just preface this whole conversation stating that the information that I'm sharing is based on a fictitious incident, something that may, may or may not have happened. I do not know the details. All I know is that somehow it may or may not have reflected or touched equipment that the company that I work for may have been involved with, may or may not have been involved with. <laughs> Back in 1934. And I'm going to do my best to try to sum up what happened uh, because it happens more often than you would think and how we can make steps to make it better, better make it safe, safer, and try to prevent these kind of incidents from occurring in the future. It's so important to identify a problem and then move towards a solution. In one you know what the problem and the solution is, and then everybody doesn't or people don't really understand what it might be. It just drives, drives me crazy. So here's a situation. We all know the building owners out there, the elevator owners, who don't want to invest in their elevators, who don't want to invest in their buildings. They see them as mainly 
entities where they want to make money off of at the least possible expense. You know who these people are. Think once in a while, maybe six, but as an elevator contractor, you see them all the time. You may not even want to deal with them or do business with them. And they're at the same time. And the point of this is, is that we're all hold these slum lords who choose not to maintain their equipment, who choose not to upgrade their equipment, account for those actions. And most of the time, it's extremely difficult to do that because the people that get injured on their equipment that they choose not to have maintained or upgraded, employees of theirs, and under that provision that they're an employee of a worker and then it's or of a, you know they're an employee of a company or an entity there's compensation insurance which only goes so far so the issue becomes when somebody gets injured on a piece of equipment that's old that the owner refuses to have maintain and just wants to get it running keep it running a piece of equipment like that can only get so much money in compensation through workers' compensation insurance. The rest of that has to go through whomever name the attorney can find on the device, on the lift, in the paperwork that can help cover more costs associated with that. And that is what happens here in the United States. For those of you listening in, in the rest of the world or in Canada, wherever we live, the United States is an extremely litigious uh, country and it's frustrating <laughs> it's really frustrating anyway there was an accident 1934 elevator building owner didn't want to do any maintenance it's all hypothetical woman died it's an awful tragedy and the reality is, is that we all have our part in ensuring that we're a contractor, whether we are an inspector, whether we are a manufacturer, whether we get emailed photos that you know that are just dangerous as heck, we all have that responsibility to not only document, but to report to ensure that the building owner understands without cert you know, without with certainty, I should say, without doubt, that the condition that their equipment is in could cause somebody to die, could cause somebody to be injured. And that is not a situation anybody truly wants. And they should know better. What makes it even more difficult is that each one of our states in the United States has their own possible internal inspection program, third-party inspection program. But do not be the person that signs off on a piece of paper saying that your elevator is running fine from 1934 when there may be some deficiencies, when there may be some issues, when there may be some items that need to be brought up to code or need to be done to be made safer, do not feel like you have to take on projects from slumlords, from people, building owners that do not want to invest in their equipment, that just want to go from elevator company to elevator company putting a Band-Aid on the situation so that they can just at some point unload their elevator because A, they're expensive, and B, it's an investment opportunity for them. I hope I summed that up as best that I could and that in, under, in, 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 in layman's terms or in more technical terms, it resonates with you. Make sure you document. Make sure you don't look the other way when you realize, hey, it's, it's an old elevator. There's not much you can do, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot you can do. Put a proposal together to upgrade it. Put a proposal together to put a retiring cam on it or upgrade the door lock circuit. I know it triggers code updates and whatnot. The reality is, is that those are not bad updates the equipment today equipment in 1917 or 1934 1917 1934 is not as safe as the equipment in 19 you know 2017 1998 etc etc it all needs maintenance the equipment that we see is unsafe and, and who knows maybe that maybe the elevator in 1934 1917 would have been safe if everything was working properly or missing what we want to do is avoid preventable accidents from happening, and we each have a part in doing that. Do not be afraid to say, holy crap, you sent me a photograph of a door lock that's not a door lock. 
it's missing half the parts or the, or the contacts are jumped out or there's no way you could tell that that would ever work or you see something like that, make it a point to put it in writing to let your customer know, the building owner know, that this is a potential safety issue where it could lead to death and or injury. And I'm not just talking about the legal mumbo jumbo. I'm talking about the point for them to understand what could happen if steps aren't taken to upgrade their elevator or to fix it. We need to do that together. Two days and realizing what actually happened, I was like, oh my gosh. It's really unfortunate, but it happens more often than not. So that's my soapbox talk for the day, for the week. I will do my part to do that on my own end, and uh, you do your part to do it on your own end. I I don't know what else to tell you. I don't want you to be the you know the guy that's talking about every job like it's gonna cause a fatality. But you know what? If it is, then be that guy. Okay, that's enough. That's enough for my my soapbox talk. I uh, take I. I'm a f- by it because I've got equipment out there that's from 1910. And I'm trying to figure out a way to let educate, educate building owners that have this old equipment. What needs to be done? What needs what what steps should be taken? The possible. The possible ramifications of not doing so. So that's that's on me. And it's a difficult task to do, but I'm gonna I'm trying to figure out a way of doing that because I do not want anybody, you know, anybody getting injured or worse on anything that we have and trying to prevent and trying to assist and educate and get that word out. So you do the same thing, I'll do the same thing. We all have that step to do. Consultants, inspectors, manufacturers, everybody, just do your due diligence and um and I think together we can all make a difference. Mechanics, do it, do it, do it. And um, other out. Okay, news is up next, and we'll have you out of here, uh, you know, as I typically say, in no time. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. All right, first news article coming from CurbChicago.com. Willis Tower is getting faster green elevators. Those of you who are not sure what the Willis Tower actually is, it's uh, the old Sears Tower, which I'm not sure how Sears is still in business. Innovation Project Chicago's Willis Tower is getting an extensive upgrade to all of its elevator network. Um, And this is some kind of cool information when you're talking about it has a staggering uh, 42,247 trips each day in the elevators. That's pretty amazing. But uh, Otis Elevators modernizing the skyscrapers, 97 passenger cars, and at 64 miles of uh, cable. I believe they're taking out the DC motors and upgrading them to AC, and that's um, that's pretty cool. Really neat building to be part of if you are ever in the... If you're ever in the Chicagoland area, you got to go to one of these two buildings. Last time I was in it, they literally were... <laughs> the observation elevator they're trying they packed us in and then the person the attendant at the bottom was like literally physically shutting the doors with his hands hoping you know helping them out uh because just the wind that was um in the pressure that was going up you know in the shaft waves it was pretty cool uh and for so many years that building was the tallest building in the world and obviously now it's not quite the same but very cool excuse me the heart for current current has an article talking about Otis Elevator announces next step in digital technology. This kind of relates to the story we covered last week about Otis being more, um, not more f- customer service friendly. Anyway, but doesn't really, it kind of relates to that, but not really. Um, but they have, um, yeah, it does, it does, because it talks is internet t- technology and how they've rolled out their newest application, which they are noting will reduce elevator maintenance and repairs that are costly to customers and inconvenient to users. So um, it's a little concerning in terms of how it how it helps. I think efficiency, efficiency is key. I think all of us in how we move forward and how we how we figure out efficiency without taking shortcuts is also extremely uh, important as well. Um, but they're gathering data from 330,000 elevators. They're developed analytics that can predict 
predict door failure. So that kind of stuff is pretty cool. Read the article. There's more in it regarding that. And uh, I think the end goal game with that is to try to become more profitable in providing information on elevators and devices that mechanics and technicians can maintain and also troubleshoot uh, quicker, easier, and then also, as I noted, predict when things need to be changed or upgraded. So maybe the, at some point we'll see more of that in the future. Okay, next news article, many injured when elevator falls six to eight feet, 101.7 FM. This occurred in Delaware. It's a brief little blurb. Elevator fell six to eight feet in a downtown Will Wilmington office building, injuring one person. Looks like the elevator might have been in the pit. Um, so I'm sure the attorneys are all over this one. And yes, if you're an attorney and you, please don't contact me. I have no comment. I just report on the articles that uh, I have found. Next week, it's the Chicago Elevator Association fundraiser, scholarship fundraiser. Uh, it will be held at Hawthorne Racetrack. I will be at that. I'm looking forward to it. 3501 South Laramie. If you want to register, it's only 65 bucks. Or if you want to sponsor, uh, you can sponsor if you're interested in uh, possibly you know doing any of that. Yep, just sign up online, and that registration will... Uh, We'll close at some point, just mainly for the sponsorship. Neat to see the board there giving away they do each year. So hats off to them. Okay, Mumbai Mayor has a uh, interesting article, and I think probably more of the world should be like this instead of what we have here in the United States. We are kind of out of control when it comes to litigation. As I mentioned before, and I having dealt with it personally on a variety of different levels. Hate, hate it. It just uh, drives me crazy. But apparently, this is an article talking about um, a case that was lost by a Mumbai family after their 13 year old boy plummeted uh, down an elevator shaft in, in India. So basically, the panel came back and said that the elevator company did not, they couldn't find any fault with what the elevator company had done or did not do in terms of upkeeping and maintenance. So, uh, more information on that. But you know, I, it would be nice at some point if judges and mediation services could help more in the legal space that the United States uh, somewhat lives in, in how in where money is generated. The company not so smart. This is kind of unfortunate. Well, it's really unfortunate. It puts a black eye on um, on our industry, on, on mechanics, and you hope this kind of thing isn't happening you know, rampantly or all over the place. Naperville Sun or Chicago Tribune. Naperville woman charged with paying $200,000 in bribes for Un University of Illinois Chicago elevator work. And, and uh, you know, maybe this happens more often than, than you think. And this is all allegedly, so don't come back and sue me. But, um, see, I'm kind of litigious. I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about the whole law thing now. Uh, but apparently, uh, owner of... Uh, Smart Elevators Company in Willowbrook is accused of paying more than $200,000 to uh, James Hernandez of Tinley Park, who is a UIC elevator foreman. Uh, apparently, that $200,000 netted or resulted in $5 million in uh, seeing and repair elevator work. So uh, you kind of have a feeling that this probably happens more often than not, not only in our industry, but in other industries. And it's really unfortunate if it does. So, yeah, not not so smart for Smart Elevator, and that's uh, truly unfortunate because they have, um, I would not want to be on the end of that at all, and it's uh, it's it's just a little concerning. Next news article, the LongIslandHerald.com. All I can say is give the Long Island Railroad a break, people, or news, because the title is the new Watog Long Island Railroad Elevator Traps Commuters Again. Oh my gosh, it's the third time in 2018 that people have had to have been rescued from the elevator. Twelve passengers in an elevator. Let's do the, uh, I can't do the math on that on my calculator. It seems like there's a lot of people, right? Every time I see an overloaded elevator, I always take the next one. Always another elevator. Never try to cram in or feel like you got to get in there. Because the reality is that the capacity of most people today are those that have, you know, weight are bigger than what we had back in the day. So, yeah, but give, give the Long Island Railroad a break, please. Come on. It's really not something to be too upset about. Okay. 
Next news article. This is a pretty in-depth story. And if I can get off this ad, two articles. Yeah. Okay, Las Vegas Review slash Journal Audit reveals over 4,000 Nevada elevators lack safety certification. Um, and pretty lengthy article. They're talking about nearly 35% of elevators operating in Nevada, about 4,360. Did not have safety certificates in June 2017. It cites in the article there's some some very there's various issues, one of which is enforcement. At, and at the end of the day, it takes money to to do these kinds of things. And I think what I think what kind of maybe struck a chord with them that that as to why they might want to change how they do things is, and I gotta see here. Um, this is this is the key. It does come down to money. Since the elevator boiler operating certificates were not issued, the division did not collect an estimated, uh, I think it's $1.4 million in fees. So according to the audit, the division failed to ensure elevator safety violations were resolved. These violations are clear a clear warning that the elevators or boilers are not operating normally and may be unsafe, the report found. Uh, auditors also said 90 elevators and boilers constructed since 2005 never received final inspection to ensure they were built safely and met standards. The policy is meant to protect the public from from substandard materials and workmanship. Um, so they're looking at ways to improve that, and, and what it's going to come right down to, I think, is investing in people, investing in, in a system that puts building owners accountable and uh, the note in the article was what am i looking at here note in the article was is that the um, government officials are going to be working with building owners directly to try to build a relationship so that they you know so they can get get paid ultimately the inspections do fall on the elevator uh, operators elevator owners uh, to get that done but obviously if there's no consequence or no um, follow up in doing that, according to the article, it's not going to get done. So anyway, but interesting article. Hopefully, they get things turned around. I don't think it's a, it's not a uh, it's not a issue that is solely upon Nevada. I don't think. I think it's always been an issue, and and legislators are are always attempting to please building owners while at the same time generating revenue. At the, you know, and and it's there's not an easy. Not an easy balance there, but there are states that do, are are do. I don't want to say make a profit, but but do or are, are inspect elevators. Excuse me, in a way that they're generating funding rather than losing it, which is good. It's a very important job to be an elevator inspector. Very important, whether you're third party or under you know under a state jurisdiction or town jurisdiction. Uh, elevator and college kids. This is cute. My my oldest son is coming back from um, University of Montana. My actually, I'm taking my wife out this morning to the airport so she can drive back with him. It'd be great to have him back. But um, this is cute. Fond farewell to the car uh, Carlisle elevator. <laughs> and it's it's pretty cute. I'm leaving this week. I know this will be difficult for us, but I think we can make it through. I can't promise I'll see you again, but I think it's better if we spend some time apart. I won't say our relationship made me a better person, because it didn't. It didn't make me a more patient person, because you frequently took me to the wrong floor, seemingly out of pure spite. I remember the first time I pressed the button for the sixth floor, and I remember leaving the elevator without realizing you had played a devilish prank on me. I would like to take this time to formally apologize to whoever lived in the room I accidentally walked into, thinking it was my own. I can honestly say it was not my own fault. <laughs> this is a cute article, John DeLilio. And um, may your experiences with your next elevator be maybe perhaps a little more enjoyable. But if, if uh, having a relationship with an inanimate object is down your path or your <laughs> something you're you're into... And this is kind of the same, um, you know, same same link. I always tell my kids whenever they're, whatever we're working on, even guys in the shop, I always treat equipment machinery as if it were a lady. I always say, treat it like a lady. Don't bang it with a hammer. Be nice to it. Talk to it. And nine times out of ten, when you think of a piece of equipment or a machine as a young lady or a lady, you're not going to be so rough with it. You're going to take your time. You are going to 
treat it as if it was a person. So I think that's probably a good lesson. It doesn't have to be a young lady. It can be just a person for that matter. But that's what I tell people. Treat it like a lady. Okay. Hey, the uh, Canadian Elder Contractors Association um, convention is coming up very, very quickly. It's uh, May 29th. Or maybe it's not till May 29th. Where is the date? May 29th, right in front of my face, the June 1st. Hope, hopefully everybody has a great time there. I, unfortunately, am not going to be able to attend, but hopefully everybody who goes enjoys themselves, and it is a successful conference for them. All right, where are we at here? Okay, next, the next um, link is to a... It's to a uh, press release or a safety notice that was sent out by GL Manufacturing. It was forwarded to me regarding the importance of purchasing genuine replacement parts for your specific elevator devices. We've all seen it. China has got a huge amount of copying power and force in what they are, what they are basically um, making over there. Not to say it's flooding the U.S. market because it really shouldn't be. But just be aware, be careful about the equipment that you buy for your own replacement parts. Um, I know there are vendors out there that will sell product that are that's, you know, that's for different manufacturers. And I always had a problem with this when it came to the, the products that we, we manufacture. Uh, because you just don't know whether or not the equipment that they are selling if it's from us that's fine but if it is from somebody else if it's from you know something they just don't have the specs that would warrant or confirm if the equipment is actually being fabricated and manufacturing to the same specifications that you yourself or your company makes them ask this is really important and it's a good good point uh, and what they've linked, link is in the in the show notes. It's a PDF file. For more information, please, um, you know, contact GAL. I think this is an important safety issue. This is a contact on a safety device that's used on a, a few different um, uh, products. So, yeah, this is just really important. So you think everything's the same, but at the end of the day, it's not. So, uh, Dan, thanks for sending me that information. I appreciate it. And if you have a safety issue or something of concern you want to share with me, please do so. I will definitely get it out there in a way that does not, okay, in a way that does not, that does not, um, oh, geez, so many pre-roll ads and all that stuff. In a way that's not done, I, I will figure it out. I'll figure it out. But anyway, link is in the show notes for that. Okay, this article, what what kills me about this that I want to touch on in and itself, woman injured in elevator malfunction at Bank of America Plaza. Okay, this is what kills me. Editor's note on the first the first line it says Jason Evans with Dallas for no oh, DFR. I don't know who that is. DFR described the incident as an elevator collapse, which it was not. Um, anyway, apparently a safety mechanism on the elevator detected a anomaly and stopped the elevator car. It was abrupt, which caused a woman to injure the lower half of her body. Don't really know why this is news. Be news so that the attorneys can go to town on it or be notified or whatever. But uh, yeah, just <laughs> so many news articles and entities out there are so quick to want to be the first one to, to break the news that sometimes they get it wrong. Sometimes they get traction. And at least in this case, they said, oh yeah, no, elevator didn't collapse. Forget what we said. All right, next news article, actually last one of the show, which is awesome. Elevator U Conference is approaching. That that conference is definitely building. i um, excited about that. I have a conference call later on this morning going over with our board to get every, everything on board. But the presentations look really, really, really good uh, to find out more about um, uh, who's presenting and also uh, attending the continuing education units that are approved. Uh, click on the, uh, the the link in the show notes or go to elevatoru.org and you can scroll down and see what everybody's talking about. Uh, pretty soon, I think we're going to have even a, a better description of those of those um, educational sessions. So, but it should be fun. I love going to the colleges. I feel like I'm in college again. I don't know why. I just feel like a kid. I'm like, wow, 
<laughs> it's just it's just neat. It's just neat to do. And it's it's kind of neat because my, you know, kids are looking at school, so it's kind of nice to see what's going on, what universities are working on, how proactive they are, which for the most part they are, and it's it's just pretty cool. So um anyway, so that's going to do it for today's show 504. This is May 9, 2018. As always, practice safety. Do your part. Can be little, can be big. It doesn't have to be, you know, being educated on lockout tagout procedures it can be as as easy as a customer calling you saying hey i want to make a dumb waiter can you help me with that uh no <laughs> i get those calls i'm telling you i get those calls people are like hey i want to make a home elevator in my in my in my uh by myself you know i got i got a i got a, a winch i've got a <laughs> and then my response is is that i do not have in these steps they could, least, they could lead to death and injury as cited in the following articles. And then I don't hear back from them ever again. And I hope to God that they don't, you know, haven't proceeded and all that. Okay, for you moms out there, happy Mother's Day. If you have a mom, wish her happy Mother's Day. Think about your mom, person in your life. And moms are awesome. They are. They are who bore you, brought you into this world, and who could take you out. But, um, yeah, moms are special. I think every day should be Mother's Day, not just one day uh, a, a week. And uh, just remind, remind yourself of that and just know that, you know, there's, uh, there, there might be a day when she's no longer there. And that day will be terrible. So, um, anyway, I'm going another dark path. Think safety. We'll talk to you next week. Have a great rest of the week. Be safe and, um, and take care. Bye-bye.